Sergeant Preston of the Northwest Mounted Police with Yukon King, swiftest and strongest lead dog breaking the trail in the relentless pursuit of lawbreakers in the wild days of the Yukon. Back to the days of the gold rush as Sergeant Preston with his wonder dog Yukon King meets the challenge of the Yukon. This is the Yukon, the territory patrolled by Sergeant Preston. Wrapped in white silence for nine out of every 12 months, each day a few short hours when a breath of frozen air pierces the lungs like burning steel. 40, 60 below zero, winter in the Yukon. The Port Trail, sole winter route open between Whitehorse and Dawson, 300 miles apart. Oh boy, oh. What is this? I sat up with a hand. Leave that gold. Did you kill him? I don't know. Robbery's one thing, but murder. Let's get the gold out of here. Look. The driver of the stolen equipment had returned to Five Fingers to report the robbery. After supplying meager descriptions of the crooks, one very big, one an average-sized blonde, the driver was sent on to Dawson for medical treatment. But the gold shipment and the masked bandits had vanished without a trace. Following an urgent appeal to the Northwest Mounted Police, Sergeant Preston hurried to Five Fingers, the station nearest the point where the robbery had occurred. Welcome to Five Fingers. I've been expecting you. Oh, so you already know we've been assigned to the Yukon Trading Company case, eh? Sure do. Word came through two days ago. You made good time. Well, we had a hard-packed trail all the way. The weather was just beautiful. Signs of a storm brewing, though. A message just came over the telegraph for you. Well, that new telegraph line is a great help to the whole force. From Dawson to Whitehorse. Orders and wanted bulletins with descriptions that used to take days to get out can now be sent in minutes. Should be a great crime deterrent. It certainly should. It's a good thing I knew Morse code, too. Save putting another man in here with me. Will you have a cup of tea? I sure will. You only stay for a minute. You said you had a message for me. Oh, right here. I hope it doesn't complicate matters for you. Do you know anything about this man, Lars Ulfick, Dawson wants me to find? Yes, I sent in the missing report on him. His job is to maintain the telegraph line between Yukon Crossing and Big Trout. He was due to check in here from Big Trout five days ago. That's two days before the gold shipment disappeared, huh? That's right. Olvik left Big Trout all right, but he didn't show up here, or anywhere else for that matter. We checked up and down the line. Well, there's been ideals, so that eliminates ordinary accidents. Is there any likely spot that Olvik might stop on the way? Only Brawley's trading post, about two miles south of us on the trail. I've drawn a map which might be of help to you, Sergeant. Now, here's five fingers. And here's Brawley's, two miles south of us. Robbery took place here, right near the cutoff to Phoenixville and Pelly Creek. It's about 11 miles from Five Fingers and, oh, nine miles north of Big Trout. These dots represent the telegraph line. Mm-hmm. Well, thanks. This map will be a great help. I'm sorry we don't have a better description of the crooks for you, Sergeant. But all the driver could remember was that one was very big and the other average size. Mm -hmm. The first thing I'd better do is find out if Brawley has seen Ulvik. Oh, you know Brawley, then? Oh, yes, ever since he had the job as foreman for Crazy Joe Flynn at the Phoenixville mine. Well, won't you finish your cup of tea first? Oh, I think I'd better pass it up and get out on Ulvik's trail. Thanks for your hospitality. Come on, King. Do you think we should go on to your uncle's mine, Jack? 
Look, Lindy, we haven't much choice. But as Mr. Brawley said, we don't know anything about getting along in this country. Darling, you know it took every cent in the world we had to get here. We can't turn back. I agree. If I'd known six months ago what I know now. Well, that does it, friends. I don't envy you hauling those supplies by shoulder pack. Oh, it's 13 miles to the old ghost town. I will manage somehow. As I told you, Mr. Brawley, even if you had a team for sale, we can't afford it. Look, Mr. Flynn, you're a couple of nice kids. In the two days you've been here, I've come to like you. Sort of like a father. And that's how I'm talking to you, like a father. You won't last a month in Crazy Joe's claim this time of the year. I know. It's no place for a lady, Mrs. Flynn. If you're smart, you'll go back to where you came from. It's impossible. We've no money left. Well, now, maybe I can... Well... Here's just the man to tell you I'm not just whistling through my whiskers. Come in, Sergeant, come in. What's the matter, Red? Are you in trouble? Oh, no, sir, not me. But these two nice young people are heading for it. What's this I hear about you folks heading for trouble? Well, it's very simple, Sergeant. Lindy and I were willed Uncle Joe's mine along with the town of Phoenixville. A ghost town. A haunted ghost town. Oh, nonsense. Anyway, the last time I'd heard from my uncle, he was a rich man. Oh, then you didn't know he'd gone broke looking for a new vein after the old one was exhausted. No. So Lindy and I spent every cent we had to get here. Well, I can appreciate your position, Mr. Flynn. But have you any idea what a Yukon winter can be? 60 below zero, snow piled mountain high, sometimes trapping you for months. And no one within miles if you should get sick. And no way to get to them. That's just what I told them, Sergeant. Oh, dear, everything seems against us. Well, not everything, Mrs. Flynn. If you two are determined to go, I'll help you. I happen to be traveling light. So just put your supplies and provisions on my sled out front. I'll drop you off at Phoenixville on my way to Big Trout. Oh, gee, that's great, Sergeant. How can we ever repay you? By taking care of yourselves. King and I'll join you in just a minute, as soon as I've had a talk with Mr. Brawley. Well, the sudden interest in the welfare of a couple of Chichacos, Red. It's a bit out of character for you, isn't it? Uh, I don't know. Just sort of like him, I guess. What's on your mind? What do you know about Lars Ulvik? Who? Lars Ulvik. Never heard of him. What's he done? Well, perhaps nothing. Five days ago, Ulvik left Big Trout for Five Fingers. Apparently, no one has seen him since. Well, then you can add me to the rest of them. One more thing, Red. Did you happen to see the missing Yukon freight sled carrying the gold shipment pass through here three days ago? <laughs> it's funny you should ask that. Well, did you see it? Well, I did and I didn't. What kind of an answer is that? Well, it happened to be my birthday and I was doing a bit of celebrating. I sort of have a hazy recollection of a freight sled going by late, but I couldn't swear to it. All right. That'll be all for now, Red. They want to ask you some more questions later, so uh, be around, William. Come on, King. Shortly after Sergeant Preston left with the Flynn's, Big Red Brawley took a shortcut, impassable to a dog sled, to reach the old ghost town ahead of them. There, at the abandoned gold mine, he made his way into a forgotten tunnel which took him directly beneath the old hotel building and into an underground hideout. Who's there? Brawley, Ovid. I wasn't expecting you until tomorrow. Oh, I couldn't wait. You're gonna have guests again, Ulvik. Guests, huh? You want me to give them the ghost business like the others? No, not this time. It's old Flynn's heir and his wife. They intend to stay. Sergeant Preston's in the district, too. He's bringing them here. Yeah, I know about Preston. I picked it up on the ticker there. Say, you don't think he's out of us stealing that gold shipment, do you, Red? No, but he's out looking for you. He stopped by the store with a mouthful of questions. So far, he hasn't any idea that you and I cooked up this scheme of tapping the official telegraph lines. A bit too slick for him, huh? Who'd guess the Mounties themselves are providing information so we can knock over every gold-heavy mucker passing down the trail? What are we going to do about the two Chichacos? The only thing to do, get them out of here before they discover us.
Jack. Jack. Lock the door. There's nothing to worry about, honey. It's just the wind. Here, I'll prop a check for you this time. Upstairs asleep. Let's get to work. What was that? It came from the kitchen. Maybe an animal broke in. I better go see. Whatever it is, I'm going with you. It's better than staying here alone. I'm scared. All right, honey. But stay close behind me, just in case there's trouble. open. It's no use, honey. We've been trapped. We're freeze to death. Here, you put this on. No, we won't. We'll cover us up with these sacks. Look, here's a candle. We'll make out. And remember, Sergeant Preston promised us he'll be back by morning. But, but what if Sergeant Preston doesn't find us? He just has to, honey. He just has to. A heavy sleet and snowstorm on the heels of an Arctic wind delayed Sergeant Preston in Big Trout for 12 hours. Receiving no additional clues to either the disappearance or loss of the gold shipment from the constable at Big Trout, Preston Everybody headed now. back toward Phoenixville as soon as weather permitted. At the junction of the two trails. Well, more trouble, King. This is the third pole that storm blew down. Well, we'd better hurry back to Five Fingers and report the damage to the telegraph line. We can stop by the Flins on the way, huh? Candle's about gone, honey. It doesn't matter. Nothing matters anymore. I'm tired. Don't give up, Lindy. You have to stay awake. It's cold. So cold. Well, the storm must have quit last night. I better get back to the post before I missed. You leave me here with those two up in the storeroom? Ah, oh, they'll freeze to death and it'll look like an accident. We're sitting tight until Preston leaves the area, not before. The Flynn's out of the way and Preston gone, we can continue our operations without interference until we have all the money we want. Then we'll skip over the border. What's that thing saying? Dawson calling Big Trout, wanting routine report. Big Trout doesn't answer. Constable Hedden must have taken the day off. Oh, shut that thing off, will you? It makes me nervous. Seems too quiet around here, King. Flynn! Flynn, are you here? In here, Sergeant. In the storeroom. Thank goodness you got here in time. How'd this happen? Well, I don't know. We, we heard noises and we came to investigate and... 
I, I, I guess the wind blew the door shut. You sure the wind blew the door shut locking it? Well, I don't think it was a ghost, do you? No, I don't think it was a ghost. You two better come back to Five Fingers with me. I have to be back there at once. Jack, I just want to go to our room where you can build a fire and we can get warm. I'd feel safer there. The only thing that really matters to us is some rest. We're staying, Sergeant. All right. Well, I think you better stay in your room with the door locked until I can return and look around a little. All right. Sure, Sergeant. Come on, Lindy. got us in the soup this time. Preston's bound to find out everything when he gets back. Maybe he won't get back. What's to stop him? Can you send out messages in that contraption, too? Sure, that's the way we used to keep in touch when we're stringing the telegraph line, just connecting anywhere and report back. Why? Sit down, I'll show you. Now write down what I tell you. This will be a message from Big Trout to Five Fingers. Like this. Please request Sergeant Preston meet me old trapper's cabin, Pelly Creek. Urgent. Have evidence on gold robbery. Will wait arrival. Sign it, Constable Hedden. What if Wayne wires back to Hedden for confirmation? Where's your mind? Didn't you say Big Trout wasn't answering Dawson? That's right. This is a good trick to get Preston away from here. I'm going back to the store and pick up my rifle. Pistol's not accurate enough for this kind of a job. You mean you're going to kill Preston? I thought you just wanted him out of the way. I do. Permanently. Oh, hello, Sergeant. Any sign of Ulvik? Not yet. You've just been out running my traps. You've been out in that storm all this time? But you had more sense, Red. Me in the blizzard? <laughs> Heck, I've only been away a few hours. We haven't had any snow since yesterday, Red. <laughs> what an eye. As a matter of fact, I was out before the storm, too. I forgot I put out the sign until just now. Probably cost me some business. Carelessness is always costly, Red. On King! Where are you going? I'm just going out to get some firewood, honey. I'll be right back. Sergeant, another message just came in for you. Did you find Ovid? No, not yet. Big Trout, are you sure? Of course I'm sure. It came in less than an hour ago. Cabin of Pelly Creek. Corporal, this message didn't come from Big Trout. I don't understand. The line's down, pole and all. I saw it myself at Phoenixville Crossing and in two places below that. Well, what kind of a game is this? It's possibly a very dangerous one. You mean someone sending out a false message? That's exactly what I mean. Your line's been tapped by someone that's familiar with our communication system. And what are you going to do about it? I'm going to catch him in his own trap. Don't forget to report that line break to Dawson. That's why I hurried back here. I'm on my way to get the message through. Hey, where did he come from? Caught him snooping around. He found the secret entrance to our hiding place. We have no time to waste. Drag him out into the tunnel and take care of him. Well, wait a minute, Red. I can't. What's the matter? Yellow? Oh, no, but... Well, all right. I'll do as you say. All right. Now, what about the message? You get it through? Good. Now, your job better be done by the time I get back.
Steady, boys. Now, listen carefully, King. I'm going to circle the house, see? I'll put you on this free lead. When I signal you, you lead the team over there. Understand? Okay, boy. Pretty soon it'll be too dark to aim good. this all on yourself by being so nosy. Who are you? What do you want? Still pretty nosy, huh? Well, you're going to get cured. So you're the one who stole the gold shipment. Yeah, it's too bad you didn't find that out in time to collect the reward. Get on your feet. Out the door. Husky! A new husky! What good will it do you to kill me? Sergeant Preston's on your heels. <laughs> That's rich. If you're depending on the Mountie, you're wasting your time. Preston's dead by this time. That's far enough. Turn around. Throw your gun away. Lindy! Now untie my husband. Just for that trick, now I'm gonna take care of you both. Drop your gun, Ulvik. You're the man that caused all this trouble. I arrest you in the name of the Crown for robbery and attempted murder. Pick up his gun, Jack. I guess this is the word you've been waiting for, Sergeant. Well, you're right. Evidently just in time. Take these two outside and tie them to the sled. All right, you two. Outside. This is why I asked you two to stop by. You mean we get the 10,000 reward for the recovery of the gold shipment? That's the confirmation from Dawson. What do you plan to do with it? We'll use it to rebuild Phoenixville the way Uncle Joe would have liked us to. It'll be a prosperous mining town again. But we should share the reward with you and King, Sergeant. That's only fair, isn't it? Oh, King and I were just doing our job. Our reward is knowing that the criminals are caught and punished. Isn't that right, King? Perfect. For us, this case is closed.